Hey, Ty, how you doing? I'm good, buddy. How are you? This Fancy is, uh... meeting you in this airlock. <laughs> yes, it was a very nice airlock. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I'm Extrovert Ty, coming to you from Magic Carpet Ride. And tonight, I'm not going to say we have a guest because he is a, a resident as of now. Well, thank you. My name is uh, <clears throat> the Papa Benir. <laughs> Benir. I'm missing an H in my name, too. This is kind of a fuck up, but we'll have to figure that out later. Well, that's no good. I can that's fix me. it up for you now. Can you? I, I'll yeah. do the same thing. All right. Now we got the show going. There you go. All right. So, yeah. All right. So I've got a lot of requests. Can we just jump right into it? Get into it. Got so many requests on chat. Uh, a lot of people come in. They say, if only we could see in one place the soup to nuts uh, hardware wallet interacting with MetaMask. And we do a full setup and we do a full migration. What we preach on chat is that you should have two hardware wallets if you've ever already already set up the um, MetaMask instance and you've done some kind of time locking uh, in that uh, being either a sacrifice or a stake and you're committed and married to that seed phrase for a long period of time. What does all that mean? We'll get right into it. Shall we just burst right into the whole startup of everything soup to nuts as if you were a complete newbie there, Ty? Do it. Do it, Papa. Okay. All right. And you're the guy, okay? So you're confused about anything or I screw up on anything. You keep me completely honest and correct me because I'm not... Uh, I am prone to error and I make plenty of errors every day. So that being said, let's jump right into it. First thing we go to is metamask.io. Make sure that it is written down properly. M-E-T-A-M-A-S-K dot I-O. You're going to download this and you're going to install Metamask for Chrome because you're probably a cool person. You're using Chrome anyway. You're going to add this to Chrome. It's checking. You're going to add the extension and it's checking, checking, checking. It's downloaded. You wait a couple seconds while it is fully downloading. My beautiful high-speed connection here in sunny downtown Tokyo. And boom, it is, I believe, still checking. Now it's going to turn off sync. Don't worry about it. It is now added to Chrome. We're all good to go. Now we go up to this puzzle piece up the top right-hand corner. Do you see this on, my, on your screen there that I'm sharing? Yes, yep. you can. Great. We're going to find MetaMask. We're going to stick the push pin. Now, Foxy Fox appears up here at the upper right-hand corner. We click on that, and what happens? Real high-speed internet here. We're going to get started. We're going to not import a wallet. You never import a wallet. There's never any reason to import a wallet in MetaMask. Don't ever put your seeds into anything that at, at all resembles a keyboard. Please. Not on your phone. Not on your PC. Never import a wallet in a MetaMask. The only time you should import a wallet is by introducing a seed phrase into a hardware wallet front end. And that means you're actually putting it in through an advanced recovery method that goes directly into the hardware wallet itself. Let's create a new wallet. Read this. I know people hate to read. Read this carefully and then agree to it. New password. Simple one. Not long enough. Two, three. Simple, simple ten. Simple. One, two, three. Okay. Click here to reveal your secret words. Mmm, secret. And what do we do with secret words? Do we uh, take a screenshot of those or copy paste them, Ty, onto a Word doc? Never, ever. No How photos. About a photo? No iCloud. No email. Nothing digital. Keep it offline. I've got my beautiful piece of analog paper and analog utensil filled with analog ink right here. I'm going to now reveal my secret words. Now everybody sees them. I'm going to write them down. I'm going to number them in two columns, one through six and seven through 12. After I have these written down on my paper, I'm going to then take the quiz. You have to finish this or else you're going to get constant pop-ups. You take the quiz by putting these in order. You put them in order by clicking on these graphic representations of the words. You're not typing them in anywhere. Let's begin. Number one is infant and crater. And then we have a state. And then we have response, select, type, figure, snow, arm, 
punch boil outdoor and flame congratulations we're all done we've also noted down on paper somewhere else what our password is so now we have our account done you see this up here what does that say ty account one account one yes account one let's imagine that this is the only account that we have it's the only address that we have this is where we put our liquid assets and this is where we have staked right we staked we didn't know about hardware wallets until now we just heard them on the chat and how important they are and how uh, metamask itself being a browser extension wallet is not very secure but let me see if i can find it for you um i'm um, 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 here we go so there was a new write-up for a brand new exploit that you should all know about this simply confirms every day <laughs> this more than anything for february 2nd was published by i uh, was this coin telegraph this is an exploit that targeted 40 different browser extension soft software uh, hot wallets and metamask was was one of them so please understand metamask is a soft wallet it is also a browser extension it's also only 12 uh, seed phrase uh, protected and that seed phrase resides um, in a residual file on your local PC or your phone. That number of the name of that file is the same in every instance, every installation. So it's easy for a hacker to find. And while it is encrypted, it is decrypted by your password that you use to get into MetaMask. So if you were to get the password from MetaMask, well, it will be very easy for a hacker to find the file and decrypt the file and get your seeds very easily. People ask me all the time, is that possible? Hell yes, it is. So this write-up, you should really read this article. It's available on Cointelegraph. You can do a, a search for this. And also the URL is up here at the top. And we'll put it in the comments below. Is that correct, Tom? Yeah, we'll have a link. We'll have a link to it in the description. So it's easy for everyone to find. Excellent. And now that I've convinced you, completely right and we don't have to worry about convincing you to go forward and actually get yourself a hardware wallet you have done so you've bought a treasure uh model one in this instance okay and here it is nice little piece of plastic it looks like a key fob in fact you should think of this as a key fob it stores your seeds your your cryptographic uh, private keys are in this device in the hardware okay understand that they're going to be generated from the hardware and stay in the hardware forever unless you're doing a migration and we will be doing that in just a moment beautiful now we have a metamask wallet and we have to assume that we've done something that we uh we believe is tied to that seed meaning we've either sacrificed so we're tied to that seed and that wallet for the duration of the waiting time for richard hart to come out with his beautiful beautiful uh pulse chain or pulse x and we're expecting someday the powers that be in the african priest uh, on high may rain down on us beautiful tokens associated somehow loosely with our amount of points that we've accrued. So while we're waiting, we know that we are possibly susceptible to attack. So what's the next best thing other than starting off the right way in a hardware wallet and doing the same? The answer is a migration. So we have our beautiful hardware wallet now in front of us. We have our MetaMask that's existing in our browser that we've already seen. We have those seeds written down, and now we begin. We go to Trezor, suite.trezor.io is the URL, and we get our desktop app for Trezor Suite. That is the manufacturer's front end from Trezor. The, um, the suite itself is ridiculously silly in terms of a, a front end, and that's why we still like to use MetaMask as our front end but it is essential to A, start up the device, and B, maintain it in terms of getting security updates and firmware updates. So we would download this. I've already downloaded it, so you would click on here, get, get your uh, platform selected, and then you'd, you'd get the desktop app. You'd download it, and you would install it. And then you'd go to the next website, which is suite.trezor.io forward slash web forward slash bridge. Again, you would select your platform here. And then you would download the bridge. And in this case, I will be downloading the bridge. And I'll be opening that up. And I will be installing it. Start the bridge. 
Now the bridge is just a piece of middleware that allows um, inter interoperability f between Chrome, MetaMask, and Trezor. You want to keep that running in the background. It's not going to give you anything very satisfying at the very end of it opening up. It's just going to simply do its thing in the background. So I've downloaded and I've installed Trezor Suite. I'm now going to switch my screen to Trezor Suite. Thank you. Okay, so I've got that running. This is the Trezor Suite. I'm now going to physically connect up my hardware wallet, my Trezor One, that's fresh out of the box in this case. Um, now, understand that when I connect it, I'm making a connection between the USB that the USB cable that came with the device. Do not get uh, fancy and creative with your USB cables. Don't plug in something from a third-party vendor. If you can help it, use the one that came with the device because there are exploits that have uh, phone home devices actually soldered into these connectors. So if you're USB type A, you're gonna connect it as close to an inline connection to your actual PC as possible. Make sure that it's a USB 3.0 or 3.1 port at very least. Connecting now. Okay, we hear that it's connected properly. And we do a security check to set up the Trezor. And we're gonna first install the firmware. Fresh out of the box, it does not contain anything logged on, loaded onto it, and that's great. So we install the firmware. Now, follow these instructions. It says on the screen of the Trezor device, there's a message, a tiny little message on a tiny little screen, and I will read it to you. It says, do you want to restart device in bootloader mode? This used to involve holding down the two, two buttons and then unplugging it, plugging it back in. Now just ask you for prompt, you press confirm. And now it's in bootloader mode. Now I will install the firmware. Confirming on the Trezor to do so. One more time. Again, there's a message on the actual Trezor. It, it asks you to confirm. You press the right hand button and it's confirmed. Now it is going to install the firmware. Looks like this if you're doing it right. Spinning gears means things are working. And you see that the time bar is moving. Just wait for a sec. People ask me, well, you know, is it really necessary to keep the uh, keep the firmware up to date? Absolutely, please. Always, whenever you get a notice, whether you're connecting it up with MetaMask or otherwise, you always keep your firmware up to date. It's very, very important to do so. Okay. Hey, we got the green check. I feel validated. Okay, and now the device is rebooting. We hear it reconnecting and we get to continue. Now, we're given these two major questions. This is a which way book adventure. Which one do you think we should go for, Ty? Create new wallet or recover wallet? Well, we're recovering one, aren't we, this time? We are, we're doing a migration from MetaMask seeds onto the hardware wallet. So we would select recover wallet. And then MetaMask traditionally, well, in general, is only a 12 word seed. As everybody should know, we select 12 words. Now, Ty, again, trick question. Standard recovery, where we enter the seed word into the keyboard, or advanced recovery, where we spell out each word on your recovery seed using the Trezor device. This is where we're gonna stop the video, of course, because I'm not gonna make people sit through me going through and keying in every damn word on this device, unless you wanna see it, Ty. Do you wanna see it? Uh, we'll see, guy. Advanced recovery. So it says, we're gonna recover wallet from seed, and on the, on the device now, there's another message that says, you know, do you really want to recover this, uh, recover the device? By continuing, you agree to Trezor.io, blah, 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 and you say yes and confirm. And now you're given a jumbled mess of letters. I wonder if we can see this on the screen. Can you see that? Is it actually uh, random can, letters? Are, let me are, are zoom in for you one moment. Thank you. Yep. You see those random letters on the screen, and some people kind of find this confusing, but think about it for a second. You got fields of letters. The first word that we're looking for to create is infant. Infant would suggest that we're gonna select the one that has the I first. Go by letter by letter, judging by this, and how it corresponds with the, on the shared screen you'll see, a matrix of dots that corresponds with the placement of the letters or letter fields that are now on the device itself. Yay! Now, you're not too old, Papa. You're not too old. Well, yeah. Too old to rock and roll, too young to die. Here we go. I'm going to set myself a pin. People ask me, did I set a pin? The answer is yes, set a pin. 
let's just make it a simple pin obviously one that you should not use is one two three and four again one two three and four pin is set continue activate coins make sure that your ethereum wallet is activated you don't go collect up all of these networks because there's only a limited amount of uh, memory here on this treasure uh, one so all for richard hart products all we need is ethereum erc20 tokens we can even deselect bitcoin because there you go complete the setup we're done if you want to edit your name or change your home screen into a nice doge dog or a candlestick or something silly like that you can do so now edit the name it's up to you but anyway we access the suite we're, co we're collecting up to a standard wallet standard wallet is just the seeds that we wrote down before right correct um, that we've imported them in so let's see if we actually did this correctly let's go to accounts ethereum wallet is connected we then want to I screw around with that on the size of the screen I want to go to uh, Ethereum account, and then we're going to go to accounts. Oops, receive ETH. And that's where we're gonna get our address. And here's our Ethereum address. You're gonna confirm this on the Trezor, and then you're gonna be able to copy and paste it. Now we're able to copy and paste it. But I want you to just check this out, Ty. Take a look at this, man. See these first four letters, zero X, seven five and the last four f b two e we're going to compare we're going to compare FB2E. that f b two e f b two e now we're going to confirm that to see if we've actually migrated it properly by sharing a different screen up rather here on the bigger one okay take a look at this what do you see there looks like f b two e and zero x seven five f b two e so now we know that we've migrated the seeds properly and now that they now reside in our hardware wallet. What's the last thing that we have to do though? Because we can't have the same seeds running in two places at once. That's bad security. It's uh, a widening and broadening your threat surface, so to speak. And MetaMask doesn't allow the connection of a hardware device that is running the same seed with the same instance of MetaMask. So what do we do, Ty? We're gonna delete this instance of MetaMask Beautiful. And we're going to install a new instance of MetaMask mm -hmm. with uh, a new set of 12 words. Very good. That will be known as our dummy wallet. Very good. And to do that, you have to go back up here to the little uh, puzzle piece, right? You're going to select Manage Extensions, and then you're going to go to MetaMask, and you're going to click Remove. Remove it, and it's gone. We have to reinstall it by going back to metamask.io. We're going to install it for Chrome all over again. And it is being installed once again. Checking again. And we're going to go through this whole process of actually creating a new hardware wallet. I mean, a new, a new wallet address. Why is that? Because MetaMask requires you to create a wallet address for it to run, even though all it's good for is to be an interface, User interface. a dumb pipe interface for our hardware wallet. We're going to create a brand new one. We're going to go through this whole process again and do a new password. Confirm it. I've read and I've agreed. Next. And we're going to open this up. And now we've got a brand new set of 12 word seed phrase. We're going to keep the old one written down because now this is our backup for our hardware wallet, migra migratory wallet. So this is important. But we're going to write down the next one we write down. We're going to make sure that we keep this separate and we mark it down as a dummy wallet. So that's our dummy. 
Why? Because we don't use this wallet for anything precious ever again. The good stuff went over to the hardware wallet, and this one is just for the use of the uh, MetaMask. So what Papa is saying there while he's writing down those words is um, account one will stay empty forever. And we're simply going to connect the hardware wallet to the user interface and we'll be using Trezor One. Exactly. Okay, so that's all done. So now we have a unique account one, do we not? We see that it's different than what we had before. Correct. correct? Okay, and now we have an account one, but we wouldn't want to start making the mistake of using MetaMask again, right? We want to use this only as a front end for our our Trezor Model 1. Is correct. that correct? Yeah. Right. Well, then, what do we do next? Now We're that we've going got, to connect hardware wallet. Connect hardware wallet. Let's take a look. We click this big round button up here in the right-hand corner. And by the way, this is the maximized view. I can't share the screen for the drop-down for some reason. Ty, do you know how to do that? Am I doing it wrong that I can't sh share the uh, drop-down menu? It's probably a setting for your side. I can't do it because you're sharing your screen. So okay, that's let me fine. see if I can just to make sure. You'd have to have it down and then it might disappear. So it could be. Entire screen probably would have to be shared. Yeah. Entire screen. Let's see if, how that looks. No. Anyway. I'm going to just keep it as is for now. Yeah. And we'll just race through it on the on the maximized version, but really if you just click the little foxy fox, you're going to get a minimized version which is easier to do. And all you do is you click this multicolored button at the upper right-hand corner. You're going to scroll down and go to connect hardware wallet. It's going to offer you the options for your make. You're going to go for Trezor. Click continue. Then you're going to be asked to allow permission to the, to the device, to the Chrome extension, actually, to, to receive the public key. You're going to get uh, export um, approval. And then you're going to be asked to enter your PIN. This is the PIN for the Model 1. Oops. And then we're going to, we may be asked a second time. Wait a second. Why are we seeing doubles here? One, two, three, four. Excellent. Now, Ty, we've come up with a request for a passphrase. If what do we do here? If, we, if we're just doing a simple migration, a connection to the migrated wallet, which is not a passphrase-enabled hidden wallet, what do we do now? Do we maybe go down here and read? Can you read this for me? Leave passphrase, passphrase blank to access your default wallet. Okay. Pretty simple, but yet Pretty we get asked this Every day in every day. What do I do here? Chat. Leave these blank to access your default wallet. And now you'll see five Ethereum addresses that appear. Now, notice the top one is the one we're interested in. There's our FB2E account, right? Correct. Okay. So don't get creative with any of this stuff don't think hey i'm gonna like you know do something crafty i'm just gonna go next i'm gonna gonna keep uh scrolling along uh wallet by wallet uh all address by address i'm just gonna make sure that the attackers would never think to go to page three where of course hexes is, is is so popularly placed all the time and i'm gonna take number 11 that would be silly because you may forget about it or something may happen Stick with the classics. Go with number one, please.
I get asked all the time, what are these extra wallets? What are all these addresses? You know, are they, are they always random or are they somehow attached to this thing? They exist on the blockchain attached to your private key. They're generated from the same private key. However, in, in kind of a daisy chain effect, each of these are derived from the first one that is the, the first time that it goes through the algorithm to derive the private key. And the second one is derived by uh, hash, rehashing the first private key to determine the second, and so on and so forth and so forth. So infinitely attached to the original private key through rehashing. I select that and I click unlock. And now, what do we have up here at the top? Trezor one. And FB2E. This is confirmed. This is the right one here. It only exists one place. It's only on the hardware wallet. We've done a successful migration. If we go up to the top, we go to account one. This one we're never going to pay attention to because this is the new MetaMask account. So we always scroll down and select Trezor one. And that's what we're going to use. Yep. Pretty simple, really. Makes sense. Yeah. Always go for Trezor one and do not have multiple Trezor accounts visible unless they are derived from the same seed. Don't have them. If, if I want to like move on to a separate physical device from I'm done with this one for the day. What should I do, Ty? If I want to move on to a separate Trezor account tomorrow or in a few minutes, what do I definitely have to do? Well, I use a ledger, so... Okay, so even if you use a ledger, perfect perfect example. If you have a Trezor and you're using it right now, and you want, you're you done with it for now, you want to actually have the ledger connected, what's the first thing do you, that you do? Remove gotta, the account. Yeah, I don't do Always. that. Always. <laughs> you don't do that? You and should, I don't have because... Any, and I don't have any problems. I know, I know, but randomly people will, and just because you don't now doesn't mean you won't later. Right, because people get in the chat and they're like, "Oh my God, I I'm getting these uh, drop transactions. What the hell do I do?" And always the first qualifying question is, "Excuse me, but how many Trezor devices do you have passively viewing uh, in your in your MetaMask?" And they always say, "Well, I've got Trezor one, Trezor two, uh, you know, Ledger one, Ledger two. I've got like four devices, and they're all there." Well, MetaMask is a bit buggy. It's a bit particular. It wants to only have one at one time. Uh, two years ago, this wasn't even a feature. And now it's a feature that you can actually have more than one connected. And for some people, they don't have a problem. But for lots, suddenly it crops up that you get a failed transaction. It's going to frustrate you. You're going to want to catch the right, the right price. You're going to want to do the right sacking moment. Whatever you want to do, you want to make sure that you've only got one Trezor device connected at one time. So to do that, you do a remove account when you're done with it and make sure that account one is visible, and then you can go ahead and lock your MetaMask. And then you do a simple connection again with the next hardware wallet. You go through the whole connecting procedure one more time. You'll get very used to it. It'll be just like second nature. You simply connect the account, and then you do a fresh connection with the next hardware device, and now it says Trezor One again. It's just that easy. Sweet. So now we've done the complete migration, and I can stop my screen sharing, and we can review. What we did is we created a new MetaMask instance. We did something on it that requires a time lock. For example, uh, we sacrificed or we staked, um, and then we were not able to send liquid assets to the hardware device, which is the first best way to do things. But since we have time locked those things and made our investment in time with that seed, it can only be migrated over. So. People ask me, well, why am I doing this? The answer is that if you began that commitment on a browser um, extension based wallet like MetaMask, um, you started off on kind of quicksand foundation. So it is questionable as to whether or not you, it's debatable whether or not you've been uh, compromised already, but it's highly possible that you've been compromised already versus a seed that began its life on this hardware device which is dedicated for the task. So the next best thing is to do the migration so that you can stop the bleeding. You are protected from the moment that you do the migration but not before. So if you were compromised or have any reason to believe that you're compromised, 
you're only gaining a modicum of security uh, improvement uh, in terms of your security posture. So please keep that in mind that it's good policy to do it anyway, but you're making an investment that's less important than starting right with a fresh wallet. So for this migration, we've completed it to the hardware device. We've then gone back and we've deleted MetaMask. We've created a brand new instance of MetaMask. And finally, we've reconnected up the device that now has the seeds that began in MetaMask back into a fresh instance of MetaMask. And that completes the migration process. Are there any questions, Young Tai? Um, I don't have any questions. Wouldn't mind dispelling a few myths. Uh, we've had people in chat think that um, if they've been uh, simply compromised on their MetaMask, that if they migrate to a, a hardware wallet, that they are somehow protected, mm -hmm. which is not the case. If your seeds are compromised for whatever reason, simply moving the seeds to uh, migrating them to a hardware wallet is not going to protect you. They've already got the keys. That's correct. For example, we showed on this video the seeds that are associated with this hardware wallet now, right? If I were to migrate this off to another hardware wallet, because I'm thinking I'm very sneaky and crafty, would I then be, a, you know, wouldn't I need to use this hardware device to approve every transaction that I make? Wouldn't the attackers out there in whoever's viewing this video, who's written these down and has loaded these seeds into their own treasure, wouldn't they need my Trezor to approve the transaction? No, the answer is no. They can put it into any hot or cold wallet, that, or hot or hardware wallet that they want, and they can perform the same transactions that you can. You are now sharing the account with the attacker. Correct. So it's only a matter of time. So you may get a, a, a bit of a, a speed level up in terms of having this ready to sign a transaction through MetaMask if you need to just plug it in and get ready for an airdrop, for example, and you want to send the the dropped tokens that come to this account, you want to just spirit them away to somewhere else quickly, you may get just a fraction of an instance uh, on top of your speed that you would have had had you originally been using MetaMask, but that's all. Now, that brings us to our next point. Ty, if we want to do this migration and we only have one hardware device, where are we going to send the the airdrops and the liquid assets that are on this hardware wallet already or uh, are airdropped to the same address what do we do next well you can either buy another wallet hardware wallet or you can you've got the seeds so as long as you've got the seeds which are the safest thing you could um, keep your public address you could wipe that one and generate a new 24 word seed phrase wallet Right, and that would mean that your migratory wallet is in what we call cold storage because it's only the seeds are only written down on paper. And when you need to interact with that account, you could do a recovery to the same hardware wallet again. It's involved, it's not convenient. We recommend that you get a second hardware wallet. Don't be a cheap bastard and not get another unique hardware wallet because it costs $62. Do so so that you don't screw things up. Or get a it, suitcase you, full of them. Yeah, right. <laughs> Shh. I'm hoarding them. I'm, I'm long Trezor yeah, hardware if, wallets. If, if, if you can't get a Trezor from the manufacturer, and that is one thing that we need to specify, only get it from the manufacturer, um, they're probably in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll only, only go to Trezor.io. Trezor.io is where you get them from. Do not uh, settle for buying them from a reseller. Um, if the manufacturer is going to tap their channel to fulfill your order, make sure that it's the onus is on them. The chain of custody must be unbroken between yourself and the manufacturer. That's what I got to say about that. So should we address the vault wallet or, you know, what do you think, Ty, to wrap this up, to bring it in for a landing? Cause well, going on yeah, for a long time. we're at 52 minutes. We could probably, um, well, you could touch quickly on the vault wallet, which we just essentially briefly spoke about having the um, right. setting up another wallet. Right. Um, okay. So let me share a screen again and I'll just point to you exactly where you would have decided to go one way and not the other. But we will be bringing in a series. So the next one um, probably be on the Model T. I'll be doing one with Papa, but I'll be, I'll be doing the Ledger series. 
um, and then we'll move on to other aspects of security. Yep. So if I open up Trezor Suite, which I can't share with you right here, let me see about that. Uh, I'm going to share it with you a different way because now I can. And I'm going to go to Window and I'm going to go to this. This is what I want to share. Welcome back to Trezor Suite. Now, if I would have gone up to the very top, I would go to the device and I would scroll down. And just for the sake of how to factory reset these things, it's right here under device. At the cog wheel up at the very top, you would have selected device and you would scroll down to find factory reset. You click this, you make sure that you know what you're doing, and you reset the device. Follow the instructions to confirm on the device and it is wiped. Now, if we begin the setup again, the firmware is already installed and all you would have to do is decide instead of recover wallet, we would have said create new wallet. And by doing this, we do a standard seed backup by writing it down. You continue on the device and then we create our backup. You select these knowing that you've done all of them, meaning you've checked your, your, your device is legit, you never take a photo of anything, and you keep the backup secured and never share it with anyone. This is the key that I would love to nail home. I mean, if, if this was obeyed by people that use their hardware wallets, we would get no problems in chat. No one would get rinsed. We have had no problems with people giving me DMs two to three times a day saying, how do I you know, go into my know-how from a from a uh, um, you know recovery standpoint, and the answer is, I'm not a recovery specialist of your funds once they're lost. So once you give your seeds to somebody else, by allowing you know a connection up to a nefarious site, or they say that they're an admin in the chat and they'd like to help you out with some support, please share the seeds. Just don't do it. Never type them in any keyboard. Never start them off in, in any in any way, shape, or form on a phone, and that's the way things should be. It just shows, though, that people don't read because it clearly they don't read. has clear instructions there. And, I mean, what part of don't take a photo don't you understand? It's, it's yep. pretty simple. And don't do things on your wife's business computer yep. and don't back up things to the cloud and don't just do this because you thought you were nervous and crafty and paranoid. All these words, when I hear them, the next thing out of your mouth is going to be, and I made the exact wrong decision. So please just take a moment. If you have any pang of question in the back of your mind, don't move forward. Come to us in the chat or ask, you know, from the second, second data source that you trust to figure out exactly what to do next. Now, yep. once we get to this screen, the, the device itself will generate the words. There'll be 24 of them in this case, not just 12. And I cannot uh, focus on there you this. Go. Yep, go back a little bit. You'll get back it. Back a little bit. Uh, it's not going to work. Anyway, the point is, is that on the device, there will be 24 words one by one appearing on the device. You write them down the first on the first viewing. And the second viewing, you get your chance to confirm. Some people just go through, oh, what, what delicious little words I'm seeing here. I'm sure I'll get another chance to review them. And then they're only given one more chance to review and they screw it up. So again, write them down as they're, as they're viewed on the device itself, one by one, 24 words with a standard wallet creation, and that's that. So that's how you would do it, Ty. Are you impressed? Are you amazed? Is it great? Awesome. So, are you gonna go buy a hardware wallet right now? <laughs> I've already got a few. Right. What, I'm, what I'm more happy about is that we're gonna roll out this series and then we'll have somewhere to direct people so we're not like a broken record non-stop in chatting. So there'll be a series. This is the Model 1. We'll do the Model T. We'll do the Ledger. We'll do Passphrase. Um, and then we'll go into some other security options that um, Papa is well versed in and I'm still learning from. Thank you very much, everybody. This concludes our first install installment of uh, uh, taking your head out of your ass and getting yourself a hardware wallet and getting your security done right. And then we'll be a stronger community as a result. You'll live to see your stakes, uh, you know, mature and all the wonderful things ahead. Awesome. Thank you for your time, Papa. Thank you. Thank everyone for, uh, if you get value out of this, just hit the like and subscribe. And um, 
be sure to come and thank Papa in main chat because um, he's going to save your future. All right, guys. All right, Talk this is Extrovert Ty signing off from Magic Carpet Ride. Peace.